People are going to death, there is prostitution, there is homosexualism, there is corruption in government, in privacy and everything. Everything is good. Even in the church, there is corruption. 
I begin to ask myself, what's going on? Why? Why? This is the last day we are living. And Romans chapter 1, from verses 1 to 32, is telling us today about this declaration that is happening in our part. And our God is very angry. God is absolutely very angry. And because God is angry, He's very angry. And as a result, we have to make sure that we don't fall into this anger of God. Because it's very easy to, for God to be angry with you. And sometimes when God is angry with you, you may not even know that he's angry with you. And you just don't know whatever you are doing. That's called deprivation and degradation. So today God is saying, okay, you can want, you want to do whatever you want to do, go ahead and do it. But there is a great consequences. And as I always say, this world is not our hope. There are people that base their hope on this world. How much money they have in the bank, how much degree they have, how much real estate they have, and how much material things they have. But we are going to leave everything behind here. But the greatest blessing they have is to know Jesus as Lord and Savior and to truly serve Him as Lord and Savior. That's where the blessing comes from. They go ahead and in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Please turn your Bible with me to Romans chapter 1. And uh, I'm going to read from verses 1. It says, This letter is from Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ, chosen by God to be an apostle and set out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophet in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In the early life, he was born unto the King David's family line, and he has shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. May God bless the word in Jesus' name. It's not telling us today that God wants us to have good news. Paul is saying, I'm a servant of God. I'm a slave. I'm a born slave. A born slave is the one that tries to obey the master, try to follow whatever the master says. You cannot disobey your master. I think yesterday I was telling my wife, I said, I actually went to university to study business administration finance and business management. I said, my own was not to make you to say, I'm going to be counting number, I'm going to be looking at uh, how to do, but I can, over, I can overlook at everything. But mine was to make sure people don't cause the company a great liability. You can see uh, the first news. They were, they, were, they were fined by jury of almost $1 billion. There's another construction company here in Dallas. They are created for. It's for the construction company. So I was telling her, I said, my goal is to make sure company don't fall, the workers don't cause great liability to companies. If you don't take time, your benign action can cause a great liability. So that's what Christ came to do for us. Christ came to make sure we don't go to hell. That's what he laid out his life. He came to make sure our life is pleasing to Him. That we are not just living in this world without hope or without God. And that's what's called good news. When Jesus came, He said, The kingdom of God is with man. The kingdom of God has come. Jesus was the kingdom of God. He showed us the way not to live in sin. He showed us how to depart from sin. When you look at what is going on around the whole world, I, I tend to listen to the whole news all over the whole world. The whole world is in disarray. There is confusion. There is war, there is famine, there is racial tension. There are so much problems all over the whole world. Anywhere you go to in America, there is so much shooting every day. A man was blowing his lung during the week. And as man was blowing his lung, somebody picked up a gun and shot him because the, 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 the blowing of the lungs or the, the, the blowing of the leaves was making, making him uncomfortable. Why don't you tell the guy stop? Or you walk out of the house for a short while. The guy just shot him in the head. That's to tell you the deprivation of man. He said, Jesus came through the lineage of David so that through him we might have eternal life. But anybody that does not accept Jesus Christ is lost. I don't care who you are. We're going to see the town. We go ahead and in Jesus' name. We're going to start from verse 5. We're going to read from verse 5. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them, so that they will believe and obey Him, bringing glory to His name. 
and you are included among these Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I am writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you peace, give you grace and peace. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. What he's saying us here today now, he said, as a Christian, your obligation is actually to go out outside in your workplace, in the market square, in the street, among your family. Tell people about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Say, hey, if you haven't known Jesus, this is the time for you to do it. And cause them to give their life to Jesus. So we bear about Jesus' name. As children of God, our greatest obligation after we receive this good news is to go out and tell people about this Jesus Christ whom we are preaching. We're not preaching about Jesus for the prophet. So we're not preaching about Jesus for prophet. A lot of churches today are focusing on the prophet, the money, the miracle money. God is not interested in the money. If it's because of money, Jesus Christ will not have come. Jesus Christ did not come so that we can have money. No, he came to give his life. And through his death, we have eternal life. May God help us in Jesus' name. As children of God, we have to make sure that we are living that life that is pleasing to God. That's what he said in the Jesse. To every believer, your obligation is to make sure you bring this good news. In Jesus' name, to all the brothers and sisters, where anybody you meet, wherever you go, tell them about Jesus. If you're not telling them, that means you have not been born again. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you ashamed to tell your family member? You know, it's very easy to get lost when you go to your village meeting or your town meeting or your workplace. You don't want people to do you're a Christian. You try to hide and say, Oh no, I don't want people to know I'm a Christian. As much as possible, you want to face into the meat. You are failing God. He said, Our own is that we should be able to tell others about this good news that Jesus Christ has come to redeem us, to save us, and that through Him we have eternal life. And that's why you have peace. You know where the world is lacking today? There's no peace in the whole world. This is gospel truth. People are taking drugs, they are taking alcohol, they are doing homosexuality, they are doing prostitution. They are pushing money, they are spending money they don't have to impress people who don't care about them. And on that basis, there is so much depression all over the whole world. I was into the news. He said almost 60% of American citizens, they are depressed. They are depressed. You know why? Because their life is in a mess. They are taking drugs. The American government is not saying we are going to put no can. So if you are issue about those, they use that knocker to, to bring you back alive. People are dying in masses in droves because their heart is heavy. They are confused. They don't know what to do. Oh, if I can just drink, if I can just smoke, if I can just take this drug, it's only a temporary relief. But later on, that drug you have taken now is not going to solve your problem. Right? It's going to compound it and increase it. That's why you need Jesus in your heart. If you haven't known Jesus, I'm not talking about going to church. You know, the word church is not synonymous to be like social club. They just go and tell you stories and it doesn't have any effect on anybody's life. And as I was telling my brother King, the other time, so when we were born again in the late 60s, we actually were born again. Any Christian brother was my brother, was my sister. We were like one family. We are moving towards heaven. We were filled with joy. We were always singing. We didn't have more at that time. And I was talking to one of her brother at that time, Brother Amadi, sister, we should know her. I was telling her, Brother Amadi, I said, in those days I came from Minnesota, and as I was coming, behold, I stopped in the south in Oklahoma. And as I stopped there, we were all, uh, I was in the south, and uh, there was no phone those days to see where there was phone you called from, wherever you there was no internet, there was no cell phone. So when I get to, Oklahoma City, I recorded around 9.30, it was raining. 
So I want to look at the, the phone booth. I just call it. So my brother, where are you? Okay, this is where I am. Wait for me. I'll come up. I'll come up. I was driving my own car from myself. I was my Christian brother. He said, wait for me. Just wait at that place there. Just ring the lamb. I said, I know where you are. And he took me to the salon. I got it. So please take a shower and I get, eat food. Not today. The world has changed. Today the world has changed. There is nothing like that. Because people that are in the church, they had somebody like But Jesus is saying, the good news is that we should go out and tell others about Jesus. That's the greatest blessing we have in serving the Lord. May God bless Jesus in verse 8. Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. Because your faith in Him is being talked about all over the world. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night, I bring you and your knees in prayer to God, whom I serve with all my heart, by spreading the good news about His Son. One of the things I was pray, I always pray for is the opportunity God willing to come at last to see you, for I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gifts that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. You know the purpose of Christian visit or Christian getting together? It's encouraging one another. Very, very important. That encouragement is very, very important. Paul said, I pray for you every day. I desire that you know Christ because your faith is spoken about over the whole world. You know your faith cannot be spoken about today if you are living a licentious life, a life of sin, a life of greed, a life of deprivation or degradation. Your faith cannot be spoken about. People can only talk about your faith. Wherever you go, tell others about Jesus. Because of the modern society we are, people don't want to tell us about Jesus. They are ashamed to even let people know they are Christians. And for that reason, God is not happy. He said, I want to come to you. When we come together, we're supposed to encourage one another. You tell me about your testimony, your walk in the Lord. I tell about my testimony, my walk in the Lord. Then we are happy together. We praise the Lord. But unfortunately today, there are no more church Testimony, no much so sharing. All I go talk about that. Oh, I have this business idea. I have this, that. I have that, that. That is not where we are born again. That's not where we are called. We are called to pray for each other. We are called to encourage each other. We are called to always talk about Jesus wherever we go. Are you talking about Jesus? Is Jesus in your heart? Paul said, I don't really want to come, but opportunity never presented itself for me to come. There may be you want to do, but there is one thing he said here. He said, I pray all the time. I pray all the time. I encourage you. I also expect you to encourage me. That is the gospel. He said, I am a shepherd dialogue. You know, as I always say, one of the toughest jobs to be in is to be a pastor. As a pastor, nobody encourage you. There is no end of the year bonus. There is nothing. You are there all the time. As you are there, you are there on your own. And if that is not taken, that's why I always say, encourage your pastor. Just say, Pastor, good morning. Pastor, good afternoon. Pastor, good evening. It is good that you greet your pastor. Just encourage him. Send me a word of it. Oh, Pastor, I really love that you're teaching. Can we talk more about that? Pastor, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your husband. I'm praying for your children. I'm praying for your wife. I'm actually encouraging him. Encourage him. It's very important. Because the pastor is preaching, are they able to listen to what I'm saying? Are they even following me? It can be very discouraging. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Today the Lord is calling you and I. He said, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that I plan many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I want to walk among you and see and, and see spiritual gifts, just as I have been, just as I have seen among you, among other gender. You know, other Gentiles know about Jesus through your preaching, my preaching. When you go to work, it doesn't matter the job you are doing. Are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? Are you a, a military guy? Any job you are doing, there is opportunity to meet somebody and preach to them. When you preach to them, 
there is that joy to know that that person is not going to be. If you have no Jesus, you want to hide because you are looking for a way to publish sin. If you are sinning, you are manipulating number. You cannot tell others about Jesus. But if you don't, if you have Jesus, you must be glad to tell others about Jesus. They go ahead and Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. He said, For I have, I have, I have a great sense of obligation to people, both the civilized world and the rest of the world. You know, Rome was the life of those days. To the educated and educated alike. So, I am eager to come to you in Rome, too, to preach the good news. Wherever you go, are you preaching the good news? Anywhere you go to, wherever you go to, tell us about Jesus. Say, brothers and sisters, have you known Jesus? Are you born again? You know, how about you to always talk to people? When somebody says, oh, the weather is very lovely. I say, what a beautiful day. Can you imagine if God had not allowed to have this beautiful weather? Some people will say, well, the sun is very, the weather is very cold. I say, well, thank God. If the weather was hot all the time, the world would have been a terrible place. But we thank God that we have cold and hot. Some people say it's raining and say, we thank God. Can you imagine if it doesn't rain? Everywhere is dry. There will be no food. Then human beings will not be able to sustain it. And we thank God because Jesus Christ is the one that gives us this provision. You try to introduce somebody to it, no matter what they say. When somebody says, well, I'm looking for a job, I say, well, thank God that God will give you a job. You have good health. That you are able to do for jail. Like people who are sick, I'm talking about jail. You tell them, you will say, well, this is happening. There's always an opportunity to tell them about Jesus. Also tell them, let me pray with you. It does, not, it does not take a long time. I pray in the soul. I pray in any way. You don't have to close your eyes. When somebody tells me their problem, it's okay. Let us pray. You can hold your hand or you just pray with them. Say, Father, I bring this brother and sister before you. You see their need. Please God, answer it. God will actually hear your prayer. Don't be ashamed. That's what Paul is saying here. For I am not ashamed of the of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jews first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This accomplished, this is accomplished from the start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. You know, faith is very, very important. Faith is a thing we have not seen. Faith is very, very important. If you don't have faith, you cannot please God. It does not matter what you are doing. Faith is very, very important. We live in a world that is so challenging today. There is so much, you know, I listen to the news all over the world. People, I listen to people in the Canada and say, oh, I miss Nigeria. I, I wish Nigeria is good. I want to go back. I watch their, their video on YouTube. Say, oh, the guy say, oh, there is no country like Nigeria. I want to go back. People in America say, oh, no, this country is hard. Things are so expensive. People in England say, oh, I want to go back to Nigeria. So, if I tell you living in England and going back to Nigeria, because there is no place like home. But if you have Christ, wherever you are, is your home. Because Jesus is with you. But if you don't have faith, you cannot please God. God give us that faith. And that faith is the belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And confessing your sin daily. I mean daily. You know, there's a way people confess to God. You know all my sin. Forgive me. No, that's not confession. Confession is telling God, I went to the store. I stole one candy. Nobody was watching me. God forgive me. Sin, God. You see that lady? I touch her. I'm not supposed to touch her anywhere. I touch her. Forgive me. God, you see, the way I was driving on the highway today, I was very pissed off with that guy. I was cursing him. Or I was, I was driving roughly. God, forgive me. God, this is what I've done. You know, when I went to work, I embellished my time. I worked for 10 hours, but I put 15 hours. God, forgive me. I will not do it again. That is called confession and repentance. But if you continue to be doing it every day, you are still doing it every day. You are doing it every day. You are committing sin. You cannot do that. You want God to bless you, you must learn to repent 100%. When I mean 100%, I mean 100%. You cannot tell God, well, you know, I did this thing because of this condition. You know, they say, a man that will not steal can never steal, even if he's hungry. If he doesn't have money. But the man that will steal, in the midst of plenty, the man will still steal. So for that reason, we have to learn to give 
I would like to go completely and be honest, absolutely honest. If you're not honest, your life cannot be happy. People are stealing, they are cheating in the name of Christ. Even the church, they are stealing money. Not to even talk of war. People come to the church not to know God, but to look for one thing or the other. But you see, the good news is that you know Jesus Christ. And as you confess your sin, and as you repent, tell everybody, get educated and educated, rich and poor. Don't be ashamed to tell anybody. We live in a very serious world today that is very depressing and very sad. May God help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Chapter Lord. verse 18. Verse 18. God's anger of sin, at sin. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became altar fools. And instead of worshipping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshipped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did well and degraded things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. Amen. That is why. God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against their natural way to have sex, and instead of indulging in sex with each other, and the men, instead of having normal sexual relationship with women, bond with lust for each other, men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserve. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, He abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, Envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are bad stabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die. Yet, they do them anyway. Worst yet, they encourage others to do them too. The word of the Lord. Thank be to God. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, you cannot see where we are today. When a very dangerous condition in the world, people are inventing new, new sin every day. When you watch internet, when you watch YouTube, and watch all these videos, you begin to ask yourself, 
as is for animals, a woman was shown on YouTube, which I find it very deplorable and degrading. I just turned it off. I was just uh, watching this thing. It didn't pop up like about this man. Here is a woman who was having sex with her dog. Hmm. He said, I want to punish my husband because he refused to have sex with me. And it was on record, on video. The husband came and said, Oh, he called the police. This man, this man loved this dog so much. He never wanted the dog to go. He gave his dog special treats. What a terrible life is that? There are so many things people are doing. Men are having sex with men. They refuse to marry. They refuse to have children. Women are having sex with women. People are stealing, but their heart is aching because that's not how God created us. Women are refused to have sex with their husband because they're not think, oh, it will spoil my, my so-called holiness. It will spoil my, my anointing. I say, who is teaching them this demonic spirit, uh, teaching? That is not the will of God. God created a woman for a man's pleasure and a, a man for a woman's pleasure. So, you see a lot of things going on around the whole world today and they, they refuse to understand, break their promises. A lot of people today don't keep promise. You know, I hear the word African time. I'm going to come to your house by 10 o'clock. By 3 o'clock, I'm not sure now. 1982, I was coming to the University of San Francisco of Oklahoma to meet Dr. Jacqueline. I was registered for my registration and admission. He said, come by 10 o'clock. By 8 o'clock, I was already there. And I was walking around the hall and looking at the picture, looking at everything. The man was just coming to the room. He said, what are you doing here? He said, I was expecting you by 10. He said, that is African time. He said, I know if I say now you come by 10, I just say 10. I said, no. I don't think there's like African time. He said, okay, come on, we started talking. He said, let me see your transcript. I show you my transcript. You're yeah, a very good student. You just got in and give me admission. I go back to the dorm to tell my Nigerian friends, oh no, Jack came and let me come to the office on the 9 o'clock. I see him and Misha and say, he asked me to come meet the dean, Dr. Uh, Wayne. Tyler Wayne was the dean of uh, business and economic school. You find that people don't keep their promise. People are not truthful. They are looking for a way to cheat. He said their life became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed. Oh, you buy this car, I'm going to buy the same car. You wear this clothes, I'm going to wear the same clothes. You buy this house, I'm going to buy a bigger house than you. But these people don't sleep in the house they bought. And they are depressed, their marriage is in the tatter, and everything is going apart. They are full of envy, murder, quarreling, deception, maliciousness, malicious behavior, and gossip. You know, yesterday, somebody sent me uh, an article. He said the pastor stole 25,000 from a member's house. Well, I just read that a short uh, portion. But on the second time, I, I sent a reply. I said, everybody is covered. Everybody that says the pastor, not me, they are pastor because they are not serving God. But on the second time, I said, let me go and look at the article again. That cannot be. How does it happen? I read the whole article. I found out the pastor did not steal the money. I quickly had to respond. say, please, disregard my first writing. This man is not actually stealing money. But he, he told the member, your money was inside your envelope. You might be invited this pa pastor for a dinner. And they put a check, blank check. Blank check, you your, your amount is sitting there, they call it open check. The amount is sitting there, there's no name. Anybody can put their name. And they sign the check. Just to give it to the pastor to put his name as he would like the name to appear. But the pastor saw the check while they were eating on the dining table. He put the check inside the Bible on the, on the dining table. He put it on the first page. And they were eating. When they finished eating, they, they, they greet and left. They look at the check. The check was no more there. After the pastor left, they said, hey, this 25,000 was meant to give to this pastor. But the man stole the check. They started spreading the news around themselves that the pastor stole the check. And they didn't go to church no more for two months. They made the pastor in the room and said, Pastor, I'm very angry with you. He said, Why? He said, Because you stole the check. We are going to give you the check truly. To appreciate you. The pastor said, God forbid, I'm going to steal a chair. He said, We're eating a dining table, I didn't want it. And I saw the open chair, I put it inside your Bible so that it the, the, the water or something will not space on the chair. You have to go right on that one. 
He said, go open your Bible. You check it there. You might open the Bible. Or you open it. You find the church. Oh, I'm so sorry, Pastor. But this story is already out of the pastor's to the church. And I, I said to him, everybody was responding. I said, really can respond to me. You find that the pastor did not steal it. I said, we have to be very careful how we spread gossip, malicious behavior. Oh, did you hear what Pastor Marshall did? Oh, I saw Pastor Marshall in the store. He was talking to one lady. I didn't let him see me. You see, Pastor Marshall, there's a lady that comes to Pastor Marshall when the wife is going to work. There's a sister that was going to my house every Friday, sometimes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we stay at my house on Sunday. And my wife go to work. But I tell my wife, oh, there's a lady that comes to your house when you have gone to work. And uh, my wife said, no, that's our sister. Any Christian sister is our sister. Islam was actually sleeping in our household, almost one year plus. He would come and sleep, and, uh, and I would go to school, and we would go and uh, the, the, our place was close to where the school was. To me, you're my sister. If you have to drive almost three hours to go to school, my house is one hour to the place. Come and sleep in my house. I will not charge you any money. We are giving half an hour because to me, we are brothers and sisters. But somebody that don't know what was happening in the house, go out and start spreading for me. Oh, there's a lady that comes to spend, spend, past my, spend weekend with Pastor Manji whenever the wife is going to work. The question there is, he may have two other people. And I goes, ah, don't mind them. They say they are pastors, they are not. We have to be very careful what we say. That's called gossip. They are bastards, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. Oh, I have this beautiful car. I have this beautiful dress. Are you aware that I have a master's degree? Are you aware that I'm a doctor? Are you aware that I'm a lawyer? Are you aware that I'm a nurse, physician, I'm a nurse? Do you know how much this, how much money I'm making? Oh, look at my beautiful car. Who cares? God is not interested in any of those things. That's the pride of life. God hates them. If you're actually a Christian, you're not going to live a very simple life. You're not supposed to be talking about your material thing. I have been, I got my idea and I was going to 40 years. Guess what? I have never talked about my education. I always talk about pastor. Everybody knows me as a pastor. Everybody say, Pastor Marshall. So everybody knows you know, I go to school. Mom, let me know. I say, why don't you want to go to school? You should, have, you should travel. Everybody want to be a pastor in America. I said, thank you, my brother. I wish you would go. I have an MBA from the University of uh, in Oklahoma. I got my MBA from Central State University in Oklahoma. I said, oh, brother, you are brilliant. Oh, my God. He said, I work for Chile. I work for one company, mortgage company at that time. And he said, well, what do you do? I said, I'm a pastor, as you can see. He said, why don't you try to go to school? I told him, my brother, pastor is my number one job. But the other job I do is like what? I said, by the grace of God, I work for Chase Bank. I'm one of their management team. The guy said, what? Which is, which is? I told him, where do you go to? Where do you go to? I said, I have my MBA from Texas State, 1986, class of 86. Got my first week from University of Texas, 1984. He said, what, 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 what? I never know you went to school. How come you never say you go to school? I said, why? Why would I have to tell you that one? I am Jesus' representative. I love Jesus. I want to talk about Jesus. So don't boast about what you have. Don't try to share with your nakedness or things you think you have. Life does not consist of the abundance of things that man possess. Paul, Paul was a highly educated. Paul was a great lawyer. But he didn't talk about all those things. He was focusing on the gospel. If Paul had remained a Jew, he would have been one of the Sanhedrin members. He would have been those are those Supreme Court judges in Israel. But this guy gave his life to Jesus. And because he gave his life to Jesus, his life changed. Paul went ahead and said, he said, and that is why God abandoned them to their sinful, need, sinful desire. You know, there's a desire we have in our heart. Every woman may have a desire. Unless Jesus not come into you. Otherwise, you have maliciousness, you have greediness, you have a tendency to steal, to cheat, to embellish your number. That's what have politicians in America here. You think they are fighting for you. Even in Nigeria, they are not fighting for you, they are fighting for themselves. All they try to do is to steal the money. Even women turn against the natural way to have sex. And instead, they indulge in sex with each other. A man was telling me, he said, Pastor, I need your help. Pastor, I need your help. I said, what? He came to my house, he was crying. He said, I want to Nigeria to bring this woman. I make her to go to school here as a nurse. I married her as a very young girl. And she came here and she went to school. And 
she became very beautiful now. Everything, make a good money as a nurse. He said, but you know what happened? I came home one day on Sunday. I made that the door was locked. I knocked, knocked, knocked. My wife opened the door with a, a towel, put it on towel. I just naturally went to the kitchen from there, went to the bedroom. I found that lady lying in the bedroom naked. I asked my wife, what is going on? He said, you're not supposed to come home without calling me. You're not supposed to come home. How can you come home without calling me? He said, the woman said, I don't want to marry anymore. The woman left. I told the woman, I said, no, I don't want to marry this man. He doesn't respect me. What is going on? This is a Nigerian woman. I tried to reconcile them. He never go. That's what the Bible is saying here. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relationship with women, born with love for each other. This woman go to church. This woman was going to church. She, she claimed to know God, but she never knew God. You see men right now, they don't want to marry. Men are married men, women are married women. That is not the will of God. And they are going to church. And they are doing shameful things. Men with other men, as a result of their sin, they suffer within themselves. The penalty they deserve. You see so many diseases. You see so many things that is going on around the whole world. Disease beyond medical. Medical cannot be able to solve this problem. They are beyond medical. They defy medical order because their heart is not in God. The Lord is calling you and I today, brother. Repent. I don't even find yourself in this type of lifestyle or behavior. But you hear the word of God every day, but your heart has not changed. He says if they thought it foolish to acknowledge God and abandon their sin, he abandoned them to their sinful thinking and let them do the things that should never be done. Things that should never be done. God said, well, you want to live that life? You want to live that life that is not pleasing? Go ahead and live the life you want to live. It's like God said, I'm abandoning you, I'm leaving you. Do whatever you want to do. You are now your own. Brothers and sisters, we are living in a dangerous world today. A world that is no more as God intended it to be. You know, our parents will say, my father used to say, when we are grown up, things were not like this. Things have changed. That many years ago, my grandfather said, oh, the world is spoiled right now. The world is going to spoil in the future. When the bad children, they think they were bad at that time, are giving back to the bad children that will come in the future. That's the generation we are today. He said, since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he, there is God, the program. He abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do the things that they should never be done. You know, God said, well, you want to be a wife? You know, somebody that's somebody that a fool will never know they are fool. If somebody that's a fool knows that they are fool, their life will change. They go ahead in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Their life became full of every kind of wickedness. You see these people? They are very wicked. They stab each other with real knife. They shoot each other with gun. They do so many things. I watch the news. The man was having a relationship with another man. He shot him with a gun. He said because he caught him with another man. I said, what of a crazy life is that? Brothers and sisters, we are living in a dangerous world today. We have to make sure we are truly who we dream to be. That our life is embedded in Christ and we live that a godly Christian life. That when somebody see or you can say, truly, this man, this woman is a Christian, is a born again child of God. But unfortunately, most people are not living that life. They are pretentious. They think they know God, but their heart is far away from God. When you see what they are doing, you'll be shocked and say, what? Can that man say he's a Christian? But it's not. So I have a write-up that I give to us. The write-up said, it's a long one. He said, uh, he said uh, Paul uh, went ahead and started talking. Let me just go to the middle of the write-up. He said, For I am not ashamed of the, of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Gentiles. Let us that, that confess Christ is Lord, there is that power there. For in it is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, just shall live by faith. When you are a just man, you don't base your condition on your present circumstances. You base your condition on what God promised. 
This emphasizes the importance of the gospel message and the power of God to save true faith in Jesus Christ. So in Christ alone, you can be saved. Paul, verse 18 to 30, Paul, Paul, Paul contains exposition of the sinfulness of the humanity and the need for the gospel message. Paul argued that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. He argued that the humanity has no excuse for their sinful nature or their sinfulness as evidence of God's existence and the power is clearly seen in the creation. You see the star, you see the moon, you see the ocean, you see the water. You see so many things in this world, they are created by God. Do you ever stop to think who created them? But unfortunately, today, we are not thinking about that one. You know what we are thinking about? Other things that are not relevant. And for that reason, God is not happy. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is calling you and I to repent today. It's never too late. Paul then goes on to describe the downward spiral of humanity's sinful sinfulness, starting with their refusal to honor God, to give Him thanks, and ending with their approval of all manners of evil, including sexual immorality, idolatry, homosexuality. He argued that God has given them over to their own loss and desire as a punishment for their sinfulness overall. Romans 1 and 2 set the stage for the rest of the epistle by outlining the sinfulness of humanity and the need for the gospel message. It emphasized the importance of faith in Jesus Christ as the means of salvation and the power of God to save those who believe. So once you believe in God, the road is open for you. But if you don't believe in God, then we can be lost. We go ahead in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, Psalm 27, verse 4. Psalm 27, verse 4. Please tell me about me. Hallelujah. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in His temple. The word of the Lord. Tell me to God. He said, this is the way to live a happy life. One thing you should desire every day of the Lord. The thing you should seek most is to live in the house of the Lord. That is the presence of God. All the days of my life and your life. If you see God with all of your heart, all of your soul, how do we see God? You daily read your Bible, you daily pray, you daily confess your sin. Don't have maliciousness in your heart. People go to a church, but their heart is far away from God. They are very evil. A husband and wife is in the not to each other. They don't say a relationship, they are married. And each person hides from each other whatever they are doing. That is not the will of God. The will of God is that husband and wife should live in peace and harmony. And if you actually belong to God, you cannot have maliciousness in your heart. You must learn to forgive, but if you're that party, you say, I'm not going to forgive, then that person has not known God. That's why a lot of people go to church and they are full of sin. I was a, I'm a Christian. I am born again. What is born again? The born again that is full of sin, adultery, and fornication, and depravity. The degradation and everything. Because of all this thing that God said, just live the way you want to live, I'm not going to force you. However you want to live, go and live that way. There is consequence. Heaven is free, hell is free. May God help us in Jesus' name. Delighting in the Lord's perfection and meditating in His temple daily. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you meditating in the Word of God? Do you actually say, God, I'm sorry for my sin? Do you repent? Brothers and sisters, I want to invite you wherever you are. I don't know where you are hearing this message. It doesn't matter whether you are hearing it. God is the same. God is calling you and I to repent. As I always say every day, the church is not about money. Don't go to church for money. Don't go to church. Oh, I'm going to church so that I can get money. I'm going to church so that I can, I can become rich. No. That is not the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. To confess your sin. To repent. And to come to him as Lord and Savior. I invite you to do that now. Tell Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Repent. If there's any malicious in your heart, tell God you are sorry. And give your life to him. And watch. 
and watch what God will do for you. Our God is an awesome God. He's able to bless, He's able to meet your need above and beyond all your needs. According to His riches in glory, through Christ our Lord Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to stop here today. I want to invite you to join us next week. We are going to pray. Do you have any prayer requests? If your, uh, your system is uh, mute, unmute it. Do you have any prayer requests? I want us to pray together because the Bible says we are two or three are gathered. God is in their midst. And I want us to pray together all the time. Prayers of the, the prayers of the righteous are very much. When we all pray together, there is that greatest, there is that great power. There's that strategy, there's that big energy to you to forget to answer. You see, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand or a hundred thousand, and three shall chase one, one million, and four, as you continue to go, the number increase is not arithmetical, it's geometrical. The number begins to increase, so we have more energy when we pray together. So, brothers, if you have any prayer requests or testimony, Go ahead. Hello. Good evening, everybody. The way. Good morning, Pastor. Yes. Good morning. To Deborah. Yes. To Deborah. Yes. I just have a prayer request, but if you don't mind, may I please just send up a word of prayer? Yes. Go ahead, please. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much this morning for allowing us to hear your word. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, for keeping us dear Father, for protecting us, Father, for providing for us when we are not even aware. But my heart wanted to say this morning, dearest Lord, that we thank you so much for this man of God, Pastor Marshall. We thank you that even before he was formed in his mother's womb, that you knew that he would be your man of God, that he would teach your people. You told him to build the people that would hear your voice and do your will, and he had been on this battlefield for such a long time, dear Father. He had continued to work with you, to do for you, to teach your word, to pull people to him, to not turn away, to not take money, dear Lord, but to do what you have called him to do, and we want to just thank you for him, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the energy that you've given him, for the stamina that you've given him. Father, continue to build him up. Continue to let him teach us, even though we might be a people that are hard and stiff-necked, that are sometimes slow to even answer and to do. He has not given up on us, dearest Lord. Do not give up on him. Give him what he needs. Yes. To continue to carry yes. with us, dearest Father. Yes. To continue to be yes. us, dearest Father. We want you to know this, yes. dear Father, that we thank you for this man of God. Thank we you. thank you for thank all you. that he is doing, for all that he has done, for what he pours into thank us. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, dear Father, we dare not take it for granted. And we want you, dear Lord, to let our heart be in tune with your heart, Father, that we show him and tell him how much we appreciate him, how much we thank him for not growing weary of us, how much he continues to let us know that you love us and what we need to do in order to please you. Yes, we thank you for him, Father. We thank you for thank his you, wife, Sister Franca, who has her ministry as well, dear Lord. We thank you for his family. We thank you that thank ever you, since he has been introduced to us, that he is the same man from day one to today. We just thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And we ask you to continue to strengthen him to pour into him, yes, not let him walk weary and well doing it, or he will reap if he faints not. Dear Lord, we know that you have him. Continue to hold him in the palm of your hand, dear Father, yes, and yes, let yes. him be come, and let us tell him how much we appreciate the Lord, for we do yes, thank you, Lord. We thank you for loving us so much that you created this man here for us in this day, and this time in this chaotic world, when we need to hear your word, we need to have the direction. And we thank you, dear Father, for creating him. We thank just want to say thank you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Mr. Marshall. We thank you for him. Thank we you. ask these blessings in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We have a we have a beloved sister online, sister Sister Uche from Canada. 
Is that which you can you greet us? Hello, good morning everyone. Good morning, my beloved sister, sister Uche of number one worldwide. I'm really very glad to be here in Canada and pray that the Lord will bless his ministry and, and cause so many to be brought to Christ through it. Mm. And uh, I so pray that I want to encourage my brother, uh, Pastor Marshall, his manager, I know this Marshall, I just met him for the first time. <laughs> so, the pastor is my long time friend from Nigeria. We worshiped in the same church, and I'm happy that as he went to the US, uh, he continued. The one we were in, in, in Nigeria, he was just an ordinary member like myself, but I thank God that he answered the call to the ministry to walk in the Lord's vineyard to bring so many to the kingdom of God. Yes. I pray that the Lord will encourage him, will empower him with his power and the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. That this ministry is strong. But as many as here, his work through this ministry to be brought to him. Bless everyone, that all these people on this platform that I'm seeing. God bless all of you and may the Lord extend his goodness and mercy to us all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Also with you. Sister Richie, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray for us. Our Father and our God, we bless your name, we worship you, we thank you for this grace you have granted us this morning to gather at your feet to hear your word. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for the instrument through whom you pass the minister to us. We thank you for this word that does not drop on the ground for nothing. It will always accomplish the reason for which you have sent it. We pray, Lord, that as many as I have listened this morning, the Lord, your word will minister greatly to them. And Father, so many who are going astray in one way or the other, Father, they will be encouraged to come back and hold you strongly, believe in you and trust you to direct us, to keep us moving. Father, and God, help us to be truthful, to be sincere wherever we are, whatever we are doing, whoever we are moving with. Father, and God, I will not disobey you in any way because nobody is seeing us. Thank you, Father, for your servant whom you always pass through every weekend to bless your people. Father, increase him in faith, increase him in power, increase him in knowledge of your word. Bless his family, his wife and children. Bless everything he lays his hand to do. Receive all glory and honor and praise. Let us bless for the new week, O oh Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, our brother is, is in England, King, Brother Kings. Brother Kings, go ahead and greet the brethren. Uh, glory be to God. I say uh, greetings to the Church of God, the man of God. His uh, family, and uh, I know the Lord is strong on behalf of this uh, ministry and uh, God that keeps. Uh, he never falters, he never fails. The Bible says it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, it's mighty, and we continue to be on this ministry. The ministers, that's the wife, the the children and every other official and uh, by the grace of God uh, the Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 5 that they look unto him the light of God shone around them and they were never ashamed uh, by the grace of God you will not be ashamed and God will grant you the grace to keep on looking unto him you cannot, God cannot be the captain of your ship and your ship will ever sink. Yes. It may be struggling on the day, it will never capsize. Uh, let's keep our eyes. The world is in turmoil yes. presently. Yes. But if we take our eye from the I mean from God, that's why we will be in trouble, our heart will not be stable to, we'll be panicking. There will still be a lot of things that will happen that uh very catastrophic. But if you pick your eyes off God, 
of Jesus Christ. That's why you are you're in trouble. You want to carry the chair, you carry the table. You are driving, you miss the road. But God is ever set. Mm. <laughs> He's never shaken. You understand? So God will help us so that our faith will not bring to and mm. uh, glory be to God that uh, God will continue to bless his church and everyone that listed, not necessarily the members, everyone that listed to this program, God will bless. Mm. Yes. God says he's going to bless anybody that bless you. That is it. Mm. If they listen to you, God is going to bless them. Mm. <laughs> so it is well in the church of God and everyone of us in Jesus' name. Amen. It is from everybody. In England, in England, in England and uh, our, uh, I mean, coronation service to our new king, that is next week. Mm. God bless you. Amen. Mm. I want to thank everyone of you, Brother Valentine, uh, Sister Deborah. Mm. Deborah has been uh, very strong with us for the past 20 something years. He has been coming very faithfully mm. and has supported the ministry with all our finances, her gifts, everything, her time, her talent, and everything. We are going to bless her. Is that better? And I brought Matt in California, and I will thank everyone of you. And uh, Sister Fina is in uh, in Maryland. It's a very wonderful sister, my beloved, 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 beloved sister. She is very generous and very kind and very lovely. She's spoiling me with all her love, all her gifts. She's always putting something in me. I say, who is telling me this one? <laughs> See, that is that's what I say. Eh? Nah, that is waiting for a car on the seventy bedroom. <laughs> 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 yeah, I want, to thank, I want to thank everyone of you for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace towards us all. I cannot thank everyone, all of you, enough for so much love you have yourself. From Brother and I, I have known each other now for almost been to 30 years. It's been there, day and night, and in the rain and the season, and it's just like a man who came to England. And then uh, we thank God. And then uh, we bless God. And, uh, we have, we have been there as a brother, day or night, and somebody can only call, and he will run down. So we go help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. I want to bless all of you for what you have done and for your love for God. Please continue. Don't get discouraged. Mm-hmm. I know the world is going to hell, but we should never be discouraged. So let us uh, pray. But I want to bless you for your word. Yes, Lord. We thank you for everything. I will just say thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? Mm-hmm. We thank you for what we have heard today. Give us the grace not to be dissuaded or discouraged by what you see and by what you hear, by what is going on, even the church of Jesus Christ on earth. Because sometimes we hear about what is going on in the churches, one will be discouraged. But I give us the grace to be discouraged in Jesus' name. Today there are so many people who lay emphasis on money, miracle money. Give 10,000 to be saved, give 20,000 to be born again, give 100,000 to go to heaven, give this amount of money to get this amount of money. That's not what he told us. The gospel is free. We didn't buy it, we shouldn't sell it. But it does not mean it was free. Jesus paid with his own blood. And we should do it with joy without counting the cost. We have been called and we shall continue. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. I want to thank every one of you. I also want to thank Bishop Wadia program in London. He's in England right now doing his uh, some program with his wife. We want to remember him. That God will be with him. Wherever he sees his name, that God will meet his name. He has been in ministry for a long, long, long time. I have touched so many souls that the God of Israel will bless him in Jesus' name. Do not allow me. Do not allow me. Do not allow me, Jesus, to go empty and
in Jesus' name. Amen. I give our God to meet your needs and to deliver you from the evil one from the hand of those that hate us in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and God bless you. We Amen. love you. Have a wonderful day. See you next week, same place, same time. Invite your friends to join us. Amen. Thank you very much. All of my Thank you. Bye-bye.